Sunday morning, early Sunday morning dog walk. It feels really good to be out and about, getting up early, head of the kids, go back and make some pancakes for their breakfast. And uh, they'll be stirring in about an hour. Uh, I just wanted to talk about something to do this morning that, uh, well, it's been bugging me. It's been, well, it's been bugging me for ages, ages, but um, the intensity of the bugging is going up. And um, yeah, it's, it's landlords moaning about not making money. And uh, lots of landlords are selling up. That bugs me. Uh, not because not <laughs> I own a letting agency, not just because of that. I mean, that's kind of part of it as well, I suppose, but um, because I don't need to. Um, property is the best wealth creation method on planet Earth. You just need to know how how to deal with it, what to do. Um, markets go up, markets go down. It's not just the price of the property, it's, it's rent levels, it's um, legislation, it's tax regime, it's all sorts of things. And you've got to know how to play it to get the best out of it. And you play it differently at different times. Um, but always, if you play it right, you play the right game, it always works property if you hook yourself up to something that's going up in value like property always does um you get you're going to be a winner property prices are going down you buy more so that's when you hook yourself up anyway practically speaking um i know that there are there are eight there are more there's loads more but i, I pick out eight eight big ones eight, eight big levers things that landlords can do to ensure they're as profitable as they can be and the eighth one is actually um a bit of a switch that you decide whether you're going to do something quite dramatic after that. So, the the eight things. Where, where these eight things come from is um, the one-page landlord success plan, which is something that we do. So, um, I didn't do any introductions, so I hope lots of people will be watching this anyway. But uh, I'm Jess. Hello. I'm the UK's happiest landlord. I'm also founder and owner of ForTheLandlords.com, which are, we're a letting agency. So, we're a letting agency, but we're a little bit different. We do things a bit differently. Um, we, we, we do things exactly the same as well. Uh, we collect rent and fix leaky taps. We're a letting agency, rent nearly a thousand properties. And that's a growing business. That's, that's what we do. Um, but we're different because, well, we're famous for two things. One is we're the UK's number one property sourcer. We find properties for landlords. Um, the kind of properties that I like to rent out myself. The like, kind of properties that we like to rent out as an agency. We find property source those properties. Uh, and we're also famous for the one page landlord success plan which is where these eight points come from so the success plan is a way of looking at a landlord's business through a lens that we know we know already you know it's not like a we're not making this up are we um we're not starting from scratch we're not we're not thinking we're going to be making new widgets what's the best way to think of a quirky it's been raining a lot here i lost a dog as well i've lost a dog Do you know when I, when I make these videos the dog just runs off and no idea where she is there's no sheet around here i've checked so we know that a farmer and there's no fields uh, no sheep in the fields um yeah so so we, we we know that we know the we know what success looks like for a landlord I mean, it's, it's, it's different for different landlords but broadly speaking there's a framework that we can look at and say this is a typical landlord business plan you almost painting by numbers you need to fill this bit in this bit in and then it makes it your business plan so that is what the one page landlord business plan is as a business for the landlords.com is famous for taking its landlords through that process so what we notice is landlords who plan tend to get better results and we make sure our landlords plan so there you go um when you go through the plan there are eight things that uh, are going to increase your profits as a landlord there are a few others as well but eight big ones and the first one is an obvious one i'll run through them one at a time i'm going to go through one to eight voids avoid the void one month void one twelfth of your income sounds obvious but you'd be amazed the amount i might even be speaking to you now of landlords who just don't keep an eye on this when that tent tenant gives notice start doing viewings start trying to get a new tenant in there make try and keep the gap between one tenancy and another tenancy as short as possible we aim for a week um, we want our uh, voids to be uh, less than one percent which is three um, uh, uh, in in a uh, three-year cycle so tenants average our, our average tenant stays about three years that's, that's about a week you work it out work out the math what one percent is um, 
Of course, there are times when that's not possible because you've got to do some work, you know, maybe on the first viewing or the first time you go around to do a check inspection, check out inspection or pre-check out inspection. That's why they're valuable, by the way, guys. You go do uh, the inspection so you know the condition of the property. Um, you find that it's going to need some work, but then get it organised the week before, the two weeks before, you know, get, can you do it while the old tenant's in there? Um, those kind of things. Really try and avoid the void. The amount of times I've heard, and I've got, I've got three right now, um, landlord who's doing his own decorating in between a, um, in a void. I just want to do it myself. I want to look at the house. I want to do it myself. He's penny pinching. He's, he's basically trying to save some money. Um, and he thinks it. His time's not worth anything. Yeah, my time with my kids is worth a lot. Honestly, that's why I'm out here, here this morning doing this, this early, so that I can get back. I went to working up, and yeah, I, I like doing these videos for you guys. I like doing them, and I like going for a walk early. Um, this is a bit of me time, but you know, I definitely won't be picking up a paintbrush this afternoon. We're going, out, we're going down the park and having a pub lunch. Um, so anyway, he, anyway, the, the point of the story is that guy is spending um, several. Uh, afternoons um, decorating he's been doing it for six weeks so it hasn't finished number two bad debt avoid bad debt have a really good referencing process don't let your tenants get into into debt uh, I mean, it's easier said than done of course but actually it's not reference them well get a good tenant um, all those things but the, the main thing is actually giving them monkeys when they go into uh, arrears it happens I wouldn't say regularly, but um, we have a process that happens within the first seven days of debt. And we know that if we apply it religiously, almost every tenant pays. You then turn up the screw a little bit on the seventh day, and then again on the 28th day, we don't have any arrears. I mean, that's obviously not factually correct. We have some arrears, but you know, it's it's a ridiculous amount. I think, I think the industry standard is something like, I can't remember what they said. I think it was seven, eight, seven percent it is. It's, Arla says seven percent, Arla good agents. I think some agents have got 20% debt um, and there is. Ours is, is 0.5% just because we give them monkeys. The third one, third way to make sure you're making money is not to spend too much money on maintenance. Have a good system, which, you know, what was that old saying? Stitching time saves nine. It really does just fix things quickly, easily, the right price. Sometimes the right price is the more expensive price. You know, you look, you're looking at the boiler, don't do three 300 pound fixes in uh, the side of, in, inside of nine months. Put a new boiler on the wall for 1500 quid. And somebody there is going, you can't put a new boiler on the wall for 1500 quid. Yeah, I can. <laughs> and uh, you need to be able to. As a letting agency, and this is one of the, thing, yeah, again, landlords come to us and say, oh, I'll do it myself because it's cheaper. Well, it might be if you budget. That is absolutely, of course, it might be if you budget, but that's no good. You're not insured. If you do that, socket yourself and they electrocute yourself, you're in a world of trouble. And guess what? You're in, you're in a nice big fat asset for somebody to come and have a, have a look at it with you in a, in a court. Um, so don't do that. But as a letting agency, we should be able to get things cheaper. We're wholesale. We, we want to buy things from the wholesalers, not from, not from retailers. We've got a, a rate card with a plumber who's doing six boilers a month with us, for example. Uh, I can still put, get, get all the kitchen units for under a thousand pounds for a kitchen. Still do that. Yeah. Not just, just at the moment. Obviously they've got to be fitted and all those things. So avoid bad, bad debts and maintenance. There's some big ones to reduce, uh, increase profits. Fourth, the fourth one is reduce costly risk compliance and uh, you'd be amazed the amount of um potential fines rent repayment orders uh all those things that come up that it's not a cost that you see every month but when it comes and you spread it out over the month it's a big cost so get your compliance right don't have those letters from the council dropping through your door and heart in the mouth moment knowing that you've just lost hours and hours of your time and potentially it's going to cost you you know uh, an enforced amount of um, maintenance costs, you know, whatever. I've got to do this, 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 pay a fine. Um, you're never going to go to one of them rent tribunals. Don't buddy, bother. Uh, I don't mean a rent tribunal. I mean, I mean a tier one, two, whatever tribunal. Just get the job done. Um, avoid costly compliance and insurance type risks. It's, a, it, it's something when they come around, it's a big number. And when you divide it into the profits or the losses, um, it's significant. So that's another way to make sure you make the right amount. Fifth, fifth one. This is probably the biggest, easiest, 
the low hanging fruit and that's what the the, the, uh, the one page landlord success plan is definitely about ident it's being comprehensive but you want to identify the, the low hanging fruit you know rent levels now, so many landlords just don't put their rent up to market level they think the tenant will leave they think they think they've been fair I don't, honestly, I don't know what they're thinking but um well the plumber the electrician the carpets the new kitchen that goes in they've all put their prices up your tenants had a pay rise price of milk and bread in the supermarket has gone up put your blooming rent up just put it up to normal um there's a really good process you can go through that's the word compassionate level head i don't know just it's fair it's, that's the word it's fair there's no it's not we're not trying to you know screw every last penny out of a tenant etc etc it's just fair and and works it out and do you know what what isn't fair is uh put it up in one big whack because um you need to and yeah it's better, better to do a 25 pound a, a year increase 50 pound a year increase whatever than a oh my god i'm doing it for ages here's a 300 pound increase that's not fair so keep on top of it and that's number six. Uh, it's not, it's number five. One, two, three, four, five, that's five. Uh, number six, mortgage costs. Going up, amount of landlords that haven't reviewed it, haven't thought about it, just let it drop onto a standard variable rate. Have a look, mortgages right now are actually where they're gonna be for the next three, four years probably. It's normal, it's normal rates, normal money. So just get on with it. Have a have a refinance, have a, a product switch, have a um, product transfer, whatever you need to do. Have a good mortgage broker, look at it. I do it regularly, and the last one I did, but I do it regularly. And the last one I did, the last quarters, um, it was still two and a half grand saved, 2,500 and something, something saved. Um, just with a couple of signatures on a piece of paper, not even that. Click, click, click on the phone, you know, you just. Um, on a, on a product transfer screen it was literally just click I don't think I even signed it I just said yes anyway done so get your mortgage costs sorted if you're thinking well the, the maths of it just doesn't add up all he's talking about here is little percentages here and there boys bad debts and maintenance are little percentages they all add up they all work keep it tight but the rent level and the mortgage costs have fundamentally changed and shifted in the last uh, well, last year, I'm sort of, where did they, where did they be changing from? They're fundamentally shifted. Um, they've, they've, been, <laughs> they've been moving since. Um, more rent, rents for the last two years, very, very significantly in the last year. And then um, the uh, mortgages since that um, kamikaze budget. That's the, I'm just looking at the dog. Oh, God. Come on, good girl. Come on. Cool. Um, she's with me. Um, yeah, so where was I? I got a little bit distracted. So yeah, fundamentally changed. So those last two things. So we're talking about voice bad debts, maintenance, little bits, very important, tight ship. But when it comes to rents and mortgage costs, they need looking at right now because if you keep them as they are, you're not gonna make any money. You're just not. Um, if you have the low rents that were in baked in two years ago, and you've got the um, mortgage costs and you haven't done anything about it for two years, you're way, way, way upside down. You need to get your rents up and your mortgage costs back down to normal levels. Do those two things. On my typical single let house, that's two or 300 pound a month. Um, what's the difference between profit and loss? So if I hadn't have done it, I would be losing money. So I can see why some landlords saying buy to let doesn't make any money because they haven't done those two things. Interesting point. I now make more money, cash, more pound profit, not percentage, um, as uh, more than I did do two years ago. So my rents have gone up by more than my mortgages have gone up and my mortgages have gone up. So yeah, there you go. Um, I'm making more money now, two years later. So just keep on top of all these things. I've always had void, uh, tight voids, uh, maintenance and bad debts. So you know, that really didn't make much difference, but you need to tighten up if you need to tighten up. Number seven, it's a... Uh, that's what's a year thing. Tax. Uh, paying the right amount of tax. You get to the end of the year, everything's good. And if you haven't got the right tax advice, it all gets wiped away in tax. The seventh way of in making sure you make the right amount of money is to make sure you're paying the right amount of tax. Do you need to be in a limited company? Maybe, maybe not. You've definitely got to have a conversation. If you haven't had that conversation yet, well, you're, 
you, you could be leaving lots of lo lots and lots of money on your table. Um, it could be it could be you know, night and day. Might not be, but you've got to have a conversation to find out. So make sure you get really really good tax advice, and that's the seventh reason. Um, seventh, sorry, seventh way to uh, increase profits. The eighth one is, well, it's the obvious one, I guess. I don't know if, it, if you've sort of figured it out by yet now, but you've got everything tight, avoids bad debts, maintenance, working well. You've got no massive compliance. Things are going to bash you on the head. Your rents are let at the right point. You've got mortgage costs to the way you can get them to be. You've got good tax advice. You should be sitting pretty. You should be, you should be looking and going, this is working well. Now, it either is or isn't at this point. Probably is if you've got things right. If you've got the right house, um, you know, right area, what it's worth versus the rent level, it should all work. Um, if you've got too much mortgage on it, it might not. Um, it might still. But the eighth point is buy or sell. It's your biggest lever. If you've got something that at that point is working really well, there's actually not much you can, more you can do. You're done. What else can you do? Buy another one. Increase, increase. That's the only way. Buy one, buy two, buy three. Our average landlord has eight properties. Um, that average, sorry, the average in the UK is one and a bit, not two. So what we do works. Um, you do get to a point sometimes where you might need to sell one. I've got a couple where I'd look at it and think, well, do you know what? It's gone up in value a lot. If I refinance it again, it probably wouldn't quite work. It's got a good amount of equity in it. Crystallise the equity redeploy it into two smaller properties that have got a better yield that might be an option buy an hmo pay some of them down if i want to sail off into the sunset and not do much uh, uh you know i'm keeping buying and buying and buying I'm, i use mortgages maybe i just want to sit with a very stable income every month and maybe that's the plan but whatever it is that that eighth one that's the bit where you can either stabilize things bam, 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 it's all just working or if you really want to increase your profits buy some more properties there'll be a link in this uh, description of this video if you want your own one page landlord success plan um, you can click it and we'll start creating that for you I won't Adam will he's got a team there's a there's a whole company in there all dedicated to helping our landlords um, first go for free sort of thing you know if you're not one of our landlords we'll still have a chat and help you plan and hopefully that would lead you to being one of our landlords if it doesn't so be it so anyway I'll sign off go make some pancakes now have a nice day.